Well, it's been quite a few days worth of 3D printing here, and you might be wondering what all these things are that we've been doing. Here is a 46% scale. It's a little under half of what it's going to be in the real world. Uh, print of a vertical grow wall that uh, I have designed. And it's a pretty cool little thing that we are going here. Uh, it's modular, so we can actually have multiple pieces come together to create multiple heights. Uh, so you can do something on a desktop. Uh, you, could, you could buy a section and put it on a desktop. You could have it above a fish aquarium in your uh, house um, and uh, grow your vegetables. Uh, to do that, we have these custom made uh, holders uh, that are designed by us and they simply go in these holes here, which part of why we're doing 3D printing is to figure out tolerances and such and if everything's tight enough there we go oops did it turn that the right way I turned it the wrong way yeah I put it in the wrong way <laughs> do that again Ugh, they are directional Hello, lady. so like I was saying one of the reasons you do 3d prints is for stuff just like this to get your tall there we go get your tolerances and everything just right and at 50% scale uh, these things are a lot smaller than they're supposed to be, uh, so uh, I don't get too worried about things like what just happened. It's just a matter of getting it all figured out. Um, but anyway, you want to 3D print stuff quickly. Now, a few days to 3D print is may not sound quick, but compared to actual tooling and going to a manufacturer and having them build, it is radically quick. Um, some of you might be thinking, oh, you should have just had someone else do it. Well, I actually called out to a whole bunch of different suppliers. Uh, some of the, you know, on-demand uh, prototyping, plastic work, 3D printing. Uh, I got a few pieces of feedback from them. Those sites are ridiculously expensive. Um, I got a quote back for printing our 3D wall, our grow walls. Uh, we have 46 of them full size, which are three of these panels. So one, two, and then another one, three. And they wanted $570,000 to do that. That is absolutely ridiculous. We're not paying that money. And then I've went to injection molding and um, rotationally molded uh, suppliers as well. And the big issue with those, injection molding would be great, but tooling costs are very expensive. Tooling is the, the, the metal molds that the plastic is injected into and the tooling is hundreds of the thousands of dollars but once you do once you pay for it uh you don't have to pay for it again for you know like a decade until the tool runs out uh gets worn out uh but we don't have a hundred we don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars to pay for tooling for this right now uh that's part of our investment strategy that's part of our series a ask that we're uh, going to be doing is getting the tooling so we can set up long-term production facilities that have all these tools in our supply chain rotationally molding uh, plastics uh, are a lot cheaper to build up front uh, than injection molding. The mold costs cost less, but there's some issues in uh, getting it set up, timelines, and also costs that are prohibitive to us right now, but we are going to be doing probably rotation molded on a lot of this stuff. And the designs have changed. Another good thing about doing this, I've sent all these designs to suppliers and the designs have changed based on their feedback. In fact, one of them sent me a book here on uh, design issues, uh, considerations when you're doing rotational molding. Uh, and that's been very helpful and it's, it's made me change things in, in this design so that it can be very easily manufactured. Um, for us though, uh, what we're going to be doing after a lot of analysis is we're actually going to be getting a very large uh, 3D printer. So we're going to be getting the Modix 3D 120 V3 printer, which is a very large printer, industrial printer, 47 inches long by 24 inches wide by 26 inches tall. The thing is going to be huge. That is a very large 3D printer. Um, I have my Creality 3D printer that I use to print these on. That's all, what you've seen in all these videos. And it does a great job at 50% scale. These are actually almost things that we could sell. Uh, would you like a little cute thing like this that grows food? Let me know, because if you do, I'll turn this into a product and we'll start making it so you can buy it. Uh, let me know what you'd want to pay for it and that would help us set up the pricing. We're gonna be getting that 3D printer here. It's a, one of the reasons we actually need to redo some of the shop uh, to support 
um, having this new printer because it needs to be temperature controlled. I got a frame that comes with it that an enclosure that actually temperature controls it uh, itself. But if it's 10 degrees outside and you're trying to keep something 80 degrees, even it, it's going to take forever to print. And this thing's going to be printing almost 24 seven when we get it, uh, because it's going to be doing, um, essentially prototype production work for us, if you will. Um, so I'm very excited to get that printer doing the small 3d prints like this 50% scale allow me to confirm that my design supports 3d printing uh, things like fill uh, percent fill like this right here needs to be all cut out so maybe I need to do some design changes and make access points so that I can remove the filler a lot easier this particular tube right here was a 3d print it didn't come out very well it came out good enough but uh, for, for you know, like fit checking but not for actual prototypes so we have to do something different there and then these are all um, these are actually highly analyzed parts here and by highly analyzed I mean MATLAB simulation was used to figure out flow rate that goes through these parts to make sure that we have proper flow rate through all of these it was all analyzed it wasn't something that just sat down and said oh I want to make it look like this uh, know that lots of analysis went into this to make sure that pressure and flow rate was all correct for the plants as well as how these little guys are set up our cups uh, we couldn't use the standard two inch cup because they would not work and actually added to a lot more fabrication issues so I think what we came up with is very novel uh, let's see here all right I did this wrong the last one uh, also uh, oh, anyway one of the things, uh, what I just, the problem I'm having there is that when I go to put those cups in, the mid span is not supported. So uh, I didn't think about that when I was uh, uh, designing it in CAD, but as soon as it gets in the real world, there's obvious problems. Like from a, a structural standpoint, once all the cups are put in here, there's no problem. But putting those cups in there, there's a lot of flex and give. And even those are, these will be mounted against the wall, there's still going to be flex and give here and we don't want that because that flex and give is on that's a cycle right and cycles when you go through them enough eventually something starts to crack something starts to fatigue crack break right that's your sequence so um we're gonna have to do some adjustments uh to the the panel here so that there's a standoff in there uh, which we'll just add to the model and it'll be 3d printed no problem bingo bango bongo uh we'll be set to rock and roll so 3d printing is absolutely awesome i love it i love that creality 3d printer it's been doing really really well um it was going for days printing this the new printer is faster uh, but it's going to be going 24 7 once we get it going you're actually going to see the full size version of this thing uh come to life and all the cups we'll probably print the cups on the creality while the modix is uh printing uh, the grow walls and then we're actually going to start setting some grow walls up in the garage before life pod 2 is ready and we'll be doing some testing on those now let's talk about food safety and plastics. Uh, this is PLA. Uh, it's not the world's greatest thing for you to, uh, uh, to have. It, it's not, not as bad as other things um, as far as food safety goes. Um, it is porous and uh, porosity is a problem if you're really trying to be food safe. Porosity for us isn't necessarily a problem because porosity in aquaponics means you have more living growth um, volume, grow area for your bacteria to go into and actually set. Remember when we use lava rock and have one? Lava rock was great because it was porous and it allowed the bacteria, the nitrifying bacteria, to actually have a place to colonize and then they would take the nitrogen rich water and the nitrogen cycle, or I'm sorry, the ammonia rich cycle and they would go through the nitrogen cycle and getting us to nitrites uh, where the plants actually eat it. So I'm not concerned about porosity, that's not an issue and waterproofness is not going to be an issue with this either because water is going to be dropping down. We're not really going to get seepage coming out at least that's i don't expect to with the density and fill rates that we're going to be using but when it comes to stuff coming off of plastics that is an issue and you're not going to be using standard pla for that this is just a test this is just a print we're not going to go put food in this we could just see if it grows but you know you really wouldn't want to be eating off of it because it will off gas uh it will let off chemicals it'll leach so they actually have, I spent a lot of time looking for this, there are food grade 3D printable materials and we're gonna be getting those in and that's a video for another time to talk about that. But uh, I love the 3D printing, I think it's great. I wish it would go a lot faster, uh, of course. I wish it'd be cheaper to have somebody else do it, but I was shocked when I got the response back, just absolutely shocked. Um, 
I could not believe it. I, I even made sure. I'm like, are you sure you guys are understanding the drawings correctly? We sent them the models and they're like, yeah, it's going to be half a million dollars. And I'm like, you're nuts. <laughs> it was, it's more expensive to 3D print uh, and send it, have it, have it sent off than it is to just go tool. You might as well just tool. Uh, I mean, it's crazy. Blew my mind. Anyway, so it was cool seeing this thing come together. Now you got the story. This is gonna be a commercial product, uh, one that uh, I'm very excited about offering uh, through eatinggrowsystems.com. Once we get it all prototyped and tested, and you'll see that all here on The Real Martian, but uh, you'll be able to get this. I actually have a kit that I designed to where you can get the full size version, and I think it's a 20 gallon fish tank, and it all goes right there on your desktop or in your office, in your kitchen, whatever. It'll look very pretty. Uh, it's going to have a nice shiny little metal stand, holds its own lights and everything. Uh, and you can grow your herbs and your vegetables right on your desktop. Uh, or like I said, on your countertop or in your garage or wherever you want. Or you could get this, uh, the full size version and put it on a patio uh, and have three of them or four uh, sections uh, so that you can grow food right there at your house, which is part of what we want to do. Giving you the independence to grow your own food in a variety of different ways. Uh, speaking of variety, um, this is one method of growing that will be in LifePod 2 and Hab 2. Uh, we call these the vertical grow walls. We will also be using another form of vertical growing, which we call vertical grow towers. Walls, towers, walls, towers. Now the towers is another video, I'll share those with you, but that's where our fish, our aquaponics uh, systems will be at, and our systems will allow you to grow root vegetables, potatoes, carrots, onions, etc. Uh, which is something that we're really excited to be offering for everyone. So stay tuned for those prototypes coming in as well. They're getting fab right now, uh, and I'm excited to share those and get them set up. They're going to be set up in the garage, and we're going to test them as well. So, Hey, thanks for following along. I hope you enjoyed this video. Now you got our update. You get to see one of our first products. Very cool, very exciting. Let us know what you think. Tell me what you think about this. Would you want to buy this? If so, how much would you want to pay? So uh, that will really give me some good market research and help us uh, set this all up for people like yourselves. Thanks for following along, everyone. Remember, you can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram so you can see some more of the up-to-date stuff since our videos are behind real time right now. And if you'd like to support what we're doing, you can do so through Patreon or GoFundMe. Or if you'd like to invest in eatinggrowsystems.com, you can send me an email at trm at therealmartian.com and I'll help you get connected with Eden and do all that paperwork and get you to be a stock owner. So. Thanks, everybody. This is Real Martian. Out.